Hi everyone, I'm Taryn and this is Verve version 0.99z, the last free version, so to say. So, and in this version, I have done a whole bunch of fixed fixes besides that, hey, um, I'm back and Verve is back alive, absolutely alive, because I'm working on version 1.0 right now. But even for this version, again, I've done a bunch of fixes. Somehow the old NVIDIA cards, they used to be quite forgiving regarding the GLSL code. And I have missed a few things that dramatically showed then also on my new computer. <laughs> the old one broke. And this new computer is just a tiny little mini PC with basically a mobile graphics card in it that has no own graphics memory. So it's a bit slow, but anyhow. So there's that. And it would finally show to me all my mistakes and I've went, I've went through all the code and cleaned it up and now finally the canvas texture shows again and works beautifully and all the brushes, uh, all the interaction is proper again. Might throw some people off who used to work with the old version, the former one, but here it is. So this is brush number nine by default. And you can see it paints continuously. There are no stipples except you see the canvas texture. If you were to turn the canvas off, then you wouldn't see any kind of canvas texture and it would look like that. A little boring, but also not bad. Let's turn it back on. So, all right, there we go. Now, one of the things that some people have noticed I think forever, but recently, is that brush uh, one, two, three, four, and five, when the fluids are on zero, show these stipples. This is brush one, this is brush two, three, four, and five. And that's because they were designed for the fluids in the beginning. And so what would, what would happen if, if you turn the fluids up? Let me turn them up all the way. And I'm going to use brush number one, and you can see no stipples. At least you can't see any stipples. And it shows what it was designed for. The same with brush number two, and three, and four, and five. So there they are. Now you can kind of sense them, of course. So those are those, and they work just fine. And the interesting thing about it is they were designed so that you can have giant brushes, like for example, <laughs> not that you would use that much, but you could have something that fills or that's larger than your canvas if you wanted to, and it still works just fine. Same goes for two and three and four and five. Actually, the same goes for all brushes because it's rather fast, especially on a decent machine. All right, let me turn the fluids back to zero and let's use brush number six. And brush number six creates continuous strokes like that. So you won't see any stipples, even without fluids. However, when you turn the fluids up, you may see something almost stipply like these wavy patterns. And that is because, of course, it still just has to grab, uh, the computer has to grab it per frame. like, uh, And these intermediate strokes it creates, they overlap and uh, that dynamic gets transferred into the fluids and hence you will have these kind of wobbly things. Interestingly enough, with brush number nine, this hardly happens or is not as noticeable. Anyway, that was brush number six. Let's turn the fluids back down. And there you go. It also, brush number six also interpolates nicely, interpolates with busy curves and so you can get very nice and smooth strokes. Yes, so there's that. And brush number seven is a ribbon brush. And it creates little polygons between each stipple, so to say. And But it doesn't have any kind of curve interpolation. So when you make really fast things, you can actually see these little polygon segments. And that didn't bother me because I didn't even want to keep brush seven. It was all about brush number eight. And brush number eight actually also has the ribbon, but it has a fractal turbulent, a turbulent noise. 
that it rolls out. And so you get these really, really nice kind of fractals. Very good for mountains and clouds and all that kind of stuff. And you can control the density either with this dial, bristle size. I probably should have written a different name. Then. So you can see, ta -da -da -da, this is rather sparse or all the way dense and then you get these dense or you can use the opacity on the pen pressure and that way you can use your pen pressure let me turn off size change and so with the pen pressure you can get these kind of fade-ins and it's also very very nice very easy to use very pleasant so there's that so that's brush number eight brush number nine you already know that has a whole bunch of curious features um, cause these bristles, each bristle is really a, a line and it can do a whole bunch of things. It can, for example, oscillate the bristles. Let me do a wicked oscillation. And that shows, uh, first of all, a lot when you have very few bristles. And you can see this is a heavy oscillation. Just a light oscillation. It gets these kind of nice little waves. Or you can add chaos to it. And this shows very little here. Let me make a, let me fill this. And there you can see it a bit better. It creates chaotic bristles and you can smudge with it as well. It creates some very interesting effects. And uh, yeah, all together, serious kind of stuff. But the fun part is wherever these bristles go, they transfer their internal velocity into the fluids. So if I turn the fluids up and I have the chaos on, well, let me turn the fluids even more up, and then you can get some very complex motions even within a single stroke. Kind of entertaining. And there is that. And the other thing too is each bristle can have a hue variation. So let me add a little bit of it. And you can see how it becomes rather oily or colorful. Also very, very neat kind of things you can do. And in version 1.0, which you won't see for a while, you can control all of that quite a bit more, including the hue variation. And that is pretty exciting, particularly for things like hair. We get to that at some point. So let me turn the oscillation back off. And there we get our straight strokes again. All right. And the last brush is the image brush. And the image brush by its very nature stipples as well. So I can show you real quick by just, I'm gonna make a brush image. You can control that, but I, I, more about this in another video. I'm gonna freeze that frame, make some stuff. I make stuff happen. So, da, 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 da. and oh, make it tiny, little bit more complex there. One image, hit I to capture it. I again to start a new one. And again, something, cut it up a little. <laughs> it doesn't matter. And I'm gonna make one more for the fun of it. And why not one more? Just so you can see a bit of something more weird happening. Okay, let me cut some stuff in here and there. So, and now we have a bunch of images. Let me turn the fluids down. And I'm going to use brush number 10. So that's zero. And by default, when you paint with it, it will at random go through the images. That's the, this little button here. And you can toggle the animation modes. So by default, it will give you random picks. <laughs> That's that. And you can see whatever color you choose here as your paint color will multiply the colors of your images. Looks like that. And you can smudge too, of course. But you can change the animation modes too, but I shouldn't go too much into it. Pressure controls which image you use. Oh, 
also interesting, or equal, which means it just uses the image you've chosen. And so on, and then uh, a random image for each stroke, kind of like brush number one, uh, brush number two, and brush number four. And then that's that. That's pretty much it. One there's one that runs straight linear through your images. If you want that sort of thing, so there's that. And you can use these brush images on. A few other brushes. For example, turn on use and you can use it on brush number nine. So now brush number nine will use the images. Let me increase the density here so you can see it a bit better. See right now it runs linearly through all your images, but we can use uh, well, run at random. Or which is the most interesting thing here is each stroke with a random brush uh, image. Yeah, and then you can get this is some really, really interesting kind of ways of working. Oh, it's neat. Uh, okay, and you can use it also on brush number two. And so that will then use it for each little bristle it has. And also on brush number three. And here by default, the bristle size is very small. Let me make it large. Let me reduce the amount of bristles and you can get this sort of thing. But especially for brush number three, it is most exciting to use the random during, during your stroke. Then you can get very complex kind of textures right away. Very interesting fun stuff. So you can be very inventive. Also, again, you can smudge with this stuff as well. Not a problem. So these are the brushes. And there are a few more things in version 99Z that I've added and besides all the fixes. And I will get to those in the next video. I hope that gave you some answers and some inspiration maybe hopefully. And uh, hopefully you're also on the forum. If not, come, come, come over and uh, and especially show me your first paintings. I'd love to see them. All right. Bye for now.